You're listening to the Monday Night Community Show with Daniel on BRFM. This is the Daniel Monday Night Community Show on demand through YouTube. Thank you very much for choosing to listen to us through this method. If you'd like to keep up to date with when I add new interviews, then subscribe to this channel. I often find myself considering the minutiae of everyday life, the regularity of delivery men that arrive just before or after they're required, the inability of people to keep hold of their possessions, and in a world in which no matter how many new forms of communication we have developed, we now all seem to live such insular lives. Loneliness in a time of seven billion seems almost a contradiction in terms, but the fact that so many now experience friendship either through the keyboard or the screen rather than simply opening the front door, I suspect describes the modern age really quite well. I am, of course, typical of this recent phenomena, and the more I experience of modern life, the more eager I am to turn on the computer and keep the front door firmly closed and locked. When I consider all the people that have knocked on my door... Double glazing? Jehovah's Witnesses? Telesales? Are you interested in a satellite package? Can we sell you? Would you like? Have you considered? It's better. It's cheaper. There's more. There's even more. It's concentrated. It's improved. It's the latest. It's the best. Have you? Do you? Could you? Might you? And the final one... We We see from from our records records that you have have had had an accident accident in the last last three years. years. No, I haven't. Get lost. Um. Oh... The final sign of loneliness is, when I consider the modern world, the realisation that when there are seven billion of us on planet Earth, the one that rings, and then rings and rings, and yet never leaves a message, has a number that always starts 0845, and he rings all the time. I also feel that when the apocalypse does come, a not wholly unwelcome event, as this will wipe the slate clean and give the Almighty a second opportunity to get it right this time, that his final revenge upon his creation will be a lone figure and a telephone that forever rings with the same recorded message playing May be owed to you due to government legislation. If you wish to stop receiving these messages, please press 5 on your keyboard pad, and the bank will keep your compensation. May be owed to you due to government legislation. Miss French, is this healthy? What do you mean? You've started to become a regular fixture. You're here more than I am. This was a lie, but I hoped it would make the point. Day is my final day. After this evening's performance, he will be based in another theatre. Another town. And so I was hoping in truth would she... Well, it wasn't going to last forever, Miss French. Uh, These touring shows go from town to town. I think that's why they call them tours. I thought at the time that I was being quite clever. Miss French never picked up on it. The theatre won't be the same without him. Uh, Watch something else. You might enjoy a different play. No, it has to be this play with Edward in it. I see. But you knew that uh, at some point he would move on. I don't want him to. No, I can see that. I want him to stay here. But uh, is it necessarily a good idea to um, fixate on on another person? Fixate? Well, what it meant was... I'll have you know, Mr High and Mighty, that I have sent out 200 CVs and only three got back to me with rejection slips. At least Edward said hello. He didn't say, go away. He didn't say, don't bother me again. It might be easy to criticise me over there, but we're not all invited to stand on that side of the counter. Many of us are never even invited to see behind the counter. 30 years ago, the world said, get an education. And that was seen as being a huge progression. The glass ceiling to be broken through. And it shattered, maybe not into a million pieces, but it did break. But not for all of us. 
For many of us, it just meant so many in the workplace that even the jobs behind bars or in cafes became scarce. Those who were doing all right before were still doing all right after. And those that were scrubbing the floors before are still scrubbing the floors now. But now with debts. And when no one wants to know, when they don't even respond, when a degree is no longer the passport to to anything, then when someone, anyone, gives you some encouragement, you hold on to it. Because from my experience, no one might ever say anything nice or polite to you ever again. I felt suitably chastised. I stood in silence. She set up her regular pitch by the entrance, and although it could only have been a few moments, it seemed to last a very long time. When Edward finally did brave the scene and the now icy atmosphere, the look of defeatism was plain to see. Sally. Edward. (laughs) Today is the final day. It was like announcing the death of a monarch to a great empire. I bought you a present. You really shouldn't have done that. And he means it. I would prefer it if you hadn't. It's a cake. A cake? And then she lifts this large box from out of a plastic bag. Miss French then gives the box to him, as if presenting him with an Oscar for giving the finest performance in a very sticky situation, which, of course, he had. Good Lord! Um, Opening the box with great trepidation, he withdraws the object. On top of the icing cover stands a cake model of him in the role of the colonel. And next to his sugary image, a second figure equally constructed out of sugar and calorie-inducing material, a figure in a white gown, the Bride of Frankenstein Made Real. Face to face with his own image, Narcissus is not immediately filled with love. Um, right. And here's a card to go with it. Thank you. On opening the card, the full horror and embarrassment of the occasion is now evident for all, well, me, to see. The cover of the card contains no image at all. No artwork, no painting or drawing, not not even a photograph, but a shining silver reflective surface like a slightly smudged mirror. Edward looks upon his own image, twice now, from the cake to the card and then back again, finally focusing back on the writing within the card itself. Now you see yourself as I see you, Sally. Edward clearly lost for words, his professional edge now starting to slip. Um, well, this is very kind of you, but you really should not have spent your money on me. Oh, I'd just love to do it. Watching you is my release. I feel like we really understand each other. But, Sally, this is only a job. You you cannot take it any more seriously than that. But I do. And then again she goes to grab his hand. But this time he is prepared and withdraws it before she can take hold. I know we were just meant to be. And she flings both arms around his neck, appearing to any that walked in at that moment that they were a couple in the throes of passion, or at the beginnings of passion, in the the still-in-their-clothes bit anyway. Thank goodness. Please, Sally, please. I could tell everyone I was your girlfriend. Say, I am with child. Oh, my God. I could tell the press. You must never do that. A better scandal could help your career. Are you crazy? I'm married. Are you? I've never seen her. I'm a family man. Then where are the children? What? At at school? Where do you think... We could have children. Uh, I think I'd better go. Where are you next week? I could come visit. Uh, Excuse me. When are you leaving tomorrow? I I could come say goodbye. I'm going now, Sally. Wait, I could come with you. You're completely mad. Don't go! Don't go! Don't go! Get out of my way! And with that, he pushes past Miss French, heading directly for the door. It's a fruitcake! She cries. (laughs) I'm embarrassed. Actually, I'm thinking what I'll have for tea that evening. Then the door opens and Edward returns. Fruitcake, you say? Yes. In that case, thank you for the cake. And again he heads for the door. And the card? He stops, returns, takes the card, and carrying his literature and culinary gifts, he finally leaves the hotel. I knew he liked fruitcake. I read it in the magazine. I make no comment on what or who is the real fruitcake, but I do have a question. 
If you were so constantly rejected, how did you ever get the money to attend the theatre on such a regular basis? I mean, theatre isn't cheap. Oh, I always bought the cheapest tickets. And then, if it wasn't sold out, waited to be moved down a couple of levels. Even if the ushers suspected they never disrupted a show over someone that made the place look full. And if you're in the centre of a row, there's not a lot they can do. But you told me that... Nothing. What? And they kept letting you play the same trick, I mean, over and over. I always paid something. They just upgraded me. And the odd sob story never hurt anyone. After all, they do say, there are better actors and actresses than those on the stage. And Edward? Who? Oh, him! When times are hard and opportunities are limited, one has to try and make what connections one can. All's fair in love and war. And when times are as tight as they are today, we're all required to perform. Just a bit. She paused for a moment, a slight smile returning to her face. So tell me truly, who do you have that is even slightly famous staying with you here next week? It was once said that if you stand in one place, the whole of life will pass you by. And I certainly feel, while I have stood here day after day, that life has well and truly passed me by. For years. It is not that I have resented my time here with the delivery men, the plumber, the electrician, the clientele that are unable to keep hold of their belongings, or even the manager. It is the fact that during all of our lifetimes we will all see moments of joy, happiness, kindness, and just occasionally true loneliness and desperation. We are, after all... People of our own time. The standards and expectations of the past are just that, of the past. It is no good turning to those disappointed by the events of the current age, saying, just be glad you weren't born in whatever time, because clearly they weren't. We all look for advancement in the modern age. We all seek meaning with whatever we ourselves are doing. If others are doing even moderately well and we are not, we feel that we have failed. The truth for many in an overcrowded world is that ever greater numbers will, like Miss French, be forced into ever greater acts of desperation just to make themselves feel that they are not wasting their lives. Maybe as we get older, we forget the desire to be needed, to find a place in the world which was once taken for granted, whereas we today now live in a time in which so many find themselves taken for granted, as we can all be replaced so easily. The Sally Frenches of this world will still try to sell themselves to any that will buy. But what if there simply aren't enough purchases in the market? After all, I never found that many. Or maybe that was just me. In As Time Passes By, David Kirby Kendall was the receptionist, Helen Fullerton was Sally, Mark Hill was Edward Carr, All the other parts were played by members of the cast. Artwork for the production was by Sheila Jackson and the play was written and directed by John Fryer. As Time Passes By is an audio production for Political Art.